everyone, it's Shell from Scrap Secrets and welcome back to my channel. So today is day 15 in the 2022 Countdown to Christmas series and we're going to be decorating die cuts to create this gingerbread house from Honeybee Stamps. Well, we're going to take the house base with some of the accessories from the gingerbread add-on and I believe they're all from the gingerbread add-on. I don't think there's anything from any of the other, the other add-ons they have a farmhouse one, they have a uh, Santa's workshop one, they have a bunch of different ones that you can make different types of houses. There's a beach house one that Nora did one time, so there's a lot of different houses you can make out of this. You get a lot of use out of the base if you get the coordinating die sets. So I think I use almost everything that you see here. I don't end up using the shutters and the chimney because it was just a little bit too much. And then I also add an, a taller tree in the final product. So there's a small tree and a tall tree. So I cut all of this out from a couple different colors of cardstock. This did take me a while because it was a lot of die cutting. So I cut out the base, the roof, the dormers, the window, and the window panes from some craft color cardstock. I cut out the snow, the backer for the door, the backer for the windows, and the candy canes out of white. And you'll see I'm using a Spectrum Noir red sparkle pen to go ahead and add the red stripes to the candy canes. It looks like it would actually put the lines for the candy cane in there, but it didn't actually do that. And I apologize, you're going to see red all over my hands because that sparkle pen just went everywhere. I still have it, it's kind of faded now. Um, so now what I'm doing is adding a little bit of light behind those dormer windows. So that was actually, the dormer roof actually comes out in a solid piece and then I took a circle window and just cut that frame out of it. So I'm using a Y00 and a Y02 just to put down onto the scrap white cardstock and I'm going to glue it behind both of the dormer windows because I want to make it look like there's candles or a light or something behind the window frames to make it look like there is life inside of this cute little gingerbread house. So I'm using my Honey Bee Be Creative Glue to go ahead and glue that down into place. I actually did a second one because the one, uh, the one yellow light that I did actually had some of the red in it. So I did another one, glued that down. And now I'm going around all the edges with a, let me see, it is a Y... Um, it was lettuce green. So it was a YG09 marker. Just went around the edges of all of the wreaths with that. And then I'm going to show you how cute it looks on there. So I'm going around all the edges. I did five different wreaths. Two for the dormers, two for the windows, and one for the front door. So once that was done, I'm going to move on to the bows and I'm going to do the same kind of thing. So one of the easiest ways to kind of make your die cuts come to life is to add some shading to it. So you can accomplish this a couple different ways. You could use colored pencils, you could use markers, you could use inks. So I do two of those three in this video. You see me here adding the Copic marker to the wreaths, and then I will add some ink to the house in a little bit just to give it a little bit of dimension and some shading because not everything would be flat. Um, I just wanted to mention too, there are stencils that go along with this. So there are shiplap ones. There's one that you can make it look like a cobblestone, um, like a stone house, a stone front house, uh, siding you can do. They have different, they have a plain roof that you can actually do the, uh, like the lines in the roof, the tiles of the roof. Um, you can do brick on the front. They have kind of like a, I think it's a distressed brick and then a regular brick, which is sized to fit perfectly on these cards. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do with these. Um, there's a lot of accessories that Honeybee has. And I believe that some of these are actually in the clearance section too. So if you guys are interested, head over to Honeybee. Oh, I am now taking some of these gumdrops and adding some white gel pen. They, when you die cut them, there are two different dies. You can, so there's a stamp set that's associated with this. So you can stamp the images out, color them in, and then cut them out. 
So there's a die for that. And then there's a die that cuts out the detail. So I use the die that cuts out the detail and at, it makes the little dots in there. So I thought I'd highlight them by putting white gel pen on top of it. And now I am adding the red to the bows, which I already told you guys about. I did the red around the middle where that knot of the bow would be. And then also at the bottom of the loops because there would be like an opening at the bottom. So I just added a little bit of shading for all of that. So this was a lot of fun to do. It did take me a very long time. This is definitely not a card that you would go ahead and mass produce, but if you wanted to make a card for somebody special, I think this would be a great one because you can make this into a shaped card or you can go ahead and put this on a card base because it does fit on an A2 size card base as long as you keep everything to the house frame. So you'll see my trees kind of overlap a little bit or go off the sides. So it would be a little bit larger than a card base, but you could do it on a five by seven or make your own size cards. So now I'm taking gathered twigs and just going around all of the edges of the gingerbread pieces, which I did in craft card stock, because when you bake gingerbread, the edges are usually darker, the middle is usually lighter, and it just gives a little bit, again, of dimension, depth, to, and interest to the pieces. So I was really enjoying putting this together, but like I said, it does take a really long time. So while you're watching me ink blend a lot of these pieces, I will do a little bit of story time. So if you saw my video from yesterday, uh, it was my birthday, so we went out to dinner last night. We just went to Outback because I was trying to find somewhere, since it was Sunday night, I was trying to find somewhere that would be equidistance for both of my siblings. My sister moved about an hour away and my brother moved, uh, lives 15 minutes past me. So I tried to find somewhere kind of in the middle so nobody had to really drive super far. Um, so ended up going there. There's a, a couple other restaurants I probably should have picked, but it was okay. The best part about it was family was all together and we got up to take pictures at the very end and nobody wanted to stand still. Uh, my sister-in-law actually did the live photo so that we could see if we could get like a second of us, all the, all the girls looking at the camera. And um, so Mila's making some faces. Nora said at one point to do funny faces. And I think my sister-in-law had stopped taking pictures at that point. Uh, we were all like, sticking our tongues out at each other, but it was a picture of me and the four girls. So it was really, really nice. Got to see everybody for my birthday, which was really great. And um, we had a really good time. So uh, even if the food wasn't the best, um, I still got to see everybody. So that was great. And, you know, we were talking about Thanksgiving and we'll all be together for Thanksgiving. And then I will pick my goddaughter up Friday morning, my oldest goddaughter, and we will go out Black Friday shopping. We've done that for the past couple years. And I had said something to her when I saw her yesterday. And then later on, she said, just tell me what time you want to come get me. And I was like, oh, I didn't realize you still wanted to come. She is a junior this year. And I know that there's probably not many more times that we'll get to go out Black Friday shopping. So I enjoy all of it. Uh, I've been doing Black Friday shopping for a very, very long time. I went with my mom and my sister years ago. We started that tradition and did it a couple times. And then they abandoned me and I still was going out super early in the morning. I know it's not the same anymore. Uh, the deals aren't the same and it's not as big of a deal, but we really like going out. Okay, so back to the card. I added some texture to the trees by taking that same Copic marker and adding some lines to the trees. I'm really loving doing that detail lately. That's just kind of how I've added depth to my flat trees lately. That's what I've been doing. And now I'm going to go and put the window on the backer and do the same exact thing that I did for the dormer windows, except it, I've already had the window panes glued in place, but it's the Y02 and the Y00, just adding some light to that. And then I'm going to go ahead and add the wreath to both of those windows and then add the bow. So I'm loving this. There's a lot of little pieces and because my nails were so long, it was kind of hard to put some of the pieces in place. I probably should have used one of my like jewel pickers or something like that or tweezers, but I just went, went with it. Um, some of the pieces were easier to pick up than others. 
and to put into place. And again, I apologize for the red on my hands. I can still see it. I've been washing my hands all night and it is still, it's like pink on my hands. That pen just, I don't know whether it exploded or just got ink on the top of it. I don't know. None of my other pens are like that. Just the red one, of course. So it's all over the place and I apologize. You can really see it in the video. I even tried to remove it with some uh, nail polish remover, some acetate, and it did not go. Is it acetate? Acetone, not acetate, sorry, acetone, and tried to get it off of my hands. As soon as I said that, I was like, I know that's not the right word, um, but it didn't come off. Okay, so now we're laying out the card just to see where I wanted things to go, and this is where I was realizing that the shutters really aren't going to fit on here. I didn't want it to look too crowded, so I'm, I inked them up, but... I'm going to put them aside and keep them in the, the packaging so that I can use them possibly for another card. Maybe if I do some smaller windows, I've glued the door front to that backer and then we're going to glue the roof on. So I'm using Honey Bee Be Creative glue to go ahead and attach all of these together. It's one of my favorite wet glues to use. I used to use ATG for everything, but I really like the way Honey Bee glue works. And earlier today, when I, so I filmed part of this video and then went and made dinner and came back and I realized I left the cap off the honeybee glue and I just had to stick a tool down in it and it unclogged it right away so very easy to fix added glue to the very top of the roof and then added the icicles or the snow it could be either one I'm making it snow and then trimming off the edges so you can use this piece of snow for the top or the bottom of the roof. That's why they make it nice and long. So you can use it either way because you notice that the roof is slanted. So it is larger at the bottom versus the top. So I'm just going to lay the pieces in place to see where everything goes. I line the house up so that I could figure out where the middle is or ballpark the middle of it so that I could line that door up the best up to the best of my abilities. I don't think I did a great job. I think it's a little bit crooked, but then I'm putting the windows on and there you go. I'm putting the shutters and that's when I realized that, yeah, really not going to work and it was too, too crowded. So again, just laying the pieces out, seeing how I wanted them to go. If I did this over again, I probably would pop up the dormer using some foam tape. I know that it is elevated on here, but I think it would just give it a little bit more of a dimensional look you know you do get a little bit of dimension here I would only do that if I wasn't mailing the card when I mail cards I try not to do too much dimension because then you have to have it hand canceled instead of having it run through the machine and I think I don't know if it's more expensive to do it that way but I don't tend to go to the post office a ton so I would rather just do it flat if I'm mailing it but if I was giving this card to somebody and because I it took so long to make this. Uh, the video footage was actually almost an hour that I had to cut down and it took me a heck of a lot longer than that. It took me a couple hours to put this card together. So um, I would not, this, like I said before, this is one that I definitely would not mass produce. So added all of the pieces on and now I'm adding the snow to the top of those two dormers. I just thought that was really, really cute and make gave like a really cute look. I probably could have also added some snow at the bottom of the roof as well, but I think that it was, a, I had a lot going on. I'm going to take the pieces that I've made, the candy canes, the trees, and just try to line them up to see how I wanted them. I had an idea in my mind, but I wasn't sure exactly how I wanted it to go. So I'm going to glue the candy canes down first because I knew I wanted them between the door and the window. So I'm using that same honeybee glue to glue them flat to the house. Like I said, I did everything flat on here. I didn't do any type of dimension. I didn't really think of it until I was doing the voiceover. I'm going to now glue the little tree to the big tree and then add it to the front of the card. And you'll notice I only put glue on the very corner of the house. I don't put them on the trees. And this was a happy accident because I'm going to go back in and add those gumdrops. And because I did that and only added the glue to the very outer edges of the house, I can lift up those trees and put the gummies behind it or the gumdrops behind it so that it looks like the trees are in front of the gumdrops. Total happy accident. Wasn't planning to do it that way. 
I'm adding the last wreath to the front door. There are also some windows for this, but I decided not to use them. Um, again, I thought it would be a lot going on to go ahead and do that. So I just left the door plain um, with just the wreath on it. I'm adding the gumdrops, trying to figure out how many I wanted on each side. I did cut out a bunch of extra ones, and I thought that I wasn't going to have enough because originally the idea was to put them all across the front, but it ended up not being that. So I'm going to start off with the red, and like you see, I tucked it behind the Christmas tree, and then I'm going to alternate, and then I realized that I have four, so I can't have the red next to the candy cane. That one has to be green. I'm going to put the green one in and then fill in the other two gumdrops. I don't show the other side, but I did basically the same thing and glued them all down to the card front uh the only thing i probably would have done was started with the green as well i started with a red so the green one is behind the tree so it blends in a little bit now i'm taking this snow writer and it's from deco art it's the first time i've used it it took a while for me to open it and i'm going to go ahead and put it over top of the snow at the top this stuff is great. I have, I've used the other stuff that you use your heat gun and it puffs it up. This doesn't puff up. It actually just comes out pretty thick and you can make it even thicker. So I'm going around the top as well as all of the, the dormer windows with this. And then I'm going to use some pr uh, Prisma glitter to go ahead and while the snow writer is still wet to add the glitter to it so it's shiny. You know, I wanted this card, you guys, if you guys know me, sparkle and shine. I love all that stuff. Glitter. I'm not actually, I'm not a huge fan of glitter because it gets everywhere and it's like still on my desk as I'm sitting here doing this voiceover. There's still glitter all over my desk and all over my hands. But I thought that this card would look really, really cute with it. So for right now, I've only done the windows and the, um, I'm sorry, the dormer windows and the top of the house. And now I'm taking my Lawn Fawn Sparkle Glaze Pen and adding a little bit, just a very thin layer to the gumdrops. Gumdrops have that frosty kind of like sugar on the outside. And I was trying to think what could mimic it. And this pen does a really, really good job. So if you are trying to figure out what to do to replicate gumdrops, whether it be for this type of card or anything else you're doing, I would suggest getting a sparkle glaze pen from Lawn Fawn and doing that. Next, I pulled out some Nouveau Drops in ebony black and added the door handle to it. I don't think this one actually comes with a door handle. So I put a dot down and if you notice the little, it had a little point on it. So you saw me flick the back just to kind of get it to be more rounded. I also took my craft pick and just kind of pulled that point out a little bit. So it's nice and rounded. And I'm going back to the snow writer and adding a little bit of snow to the trees and then adding more of that Prisma color or Prisma glitter to just the trees. Now the gumdrops were not dry because I just had the sparkle uh, glaze on them. So a little bit might have gotten on there, but that's okay because you can use that too. You could add a little, or if you had like a little bit of added some maybe matte medium and then added the Prisma glitter to it, it probably would look very similar to the sparkle glaze. I'm going to do that on both trees and I hadn't planned on doing that originally. I thought that I was just going to keep them plain, but I really like the way it looked with a little bit of snow on it. Since there was snow on the roof and snow on the dormers, I thought that we would have to have a little bit of snow on the tree. While I'm putting the final details on this card, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about the intro video. If you haven't gone over and checked it out, make sure that you do. There are giveaways that are going to be happening during this 2022 Countdown to Christmas series. I have all the information on the intro video. I will leave the link to it in the description box below. Make sure you check that out. I appreciate everybody's comments, likes, subscriptions. I'm loving this. I hope that you guys are enjoying this series. And, um, you know, if, like I said, if you haven't seen the video, head over and check it out so you can find out what the series is all about. So back to the card, we are going to make this a shaped card. So I cut out an extra piece as a backer. And then the attachment piece, there is a die for it that comes with this set, but 
I must have lost it or misplaced it or put it somewhere else. And I just cut down a piece of cardstock that measures about a quarter of an inch or a half of an inch, scored it in the middle and attached it to the card base and then to the card front. This is an easy way to make a shaped card. And if you want to hide that, you can cut out extra pieces and put them on the inside so you'll never see that mechanism. Oh, well, that's the card for today. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have comments or questions, please feel free to leave them below. And I'll see you again real soon for another video. Bye!